Hey, this is Bo. And this is Aaron. And we are Mash the Controller. You're listening to Third Eye Radio. Listen outside the box. You're listening to the Third Eye Radio Network. This is the Mokita Report. The known unknowns of the known truth, unspoken, with special guests. And now your hosts, Northern Light Star and Dara, the Mokita Report, only on Third Eye Radio Network. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Northern Light Star, along with my man, my main man, Dara. And today we're having a special guest, March Sargent. He is a well-known flat earther, and uh, he is frequently on uh, truthfrequencyradio.com if you want to listen to his radio show. Um, today we're going to be talking about flat earth, and this is a recorded video. So uh, go ahead, Mark. Say hello. Uh, do a brief introduction. Good afternoon. I am Mark Sargent, and I am also a flat earther. Yes. <laughs> welcome, Mark. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining the show. Hey, thanks for inviting me. Okay, no problem. So, Daria, you, uh, would you mind explaining how you wanted to talk about flat earth today? Yeah, I wanted to cover specifically Flat Earth because not too long ago I posted a video on the Third Eye channel and uh, no one has commented or responded to it yet. Uh, I think they're a little afraid to touch it, but my question is, or my challenge, I call it the Earth Challenge, proving a flat or spheroid planet to a blind person. And so you got to kind of try to eliminate... um, Visualization. Uh, yeah, visualization. So how would you prove a flat earth or a sphere um, to a blind person using whatever other means? And one of the things that I said in the video, I forgot to mention to you, Mark, by email, was that I think it has something to do with sound, like whale songs or dolphin echolocation, that sort of thing. <laughs> I so, don't know if I'd use that. No? Um, without without visual, visualization, because I, I was giving this a little bit of thought. Okay. And... I would still use the eight inches per mile squared, and here's how I do it. Now we're talk- we're assuming the person to E is blind since birth, or or no, do they? Do they we're do just they have doing sight me. at some point. Yeah, we're just kind of. It was my question, so I lost my sight in 2003. So I do have a very good grasp of visual. I was a visual artist as well, graphic designer. Okay, well, no, no, I can do I can do it uh, since birth. It's okay. not it, I, either way. It kind of works the same. Okay, which is because. Uh, people, you have to forgive me. I'm not used to this. Uh, do I say blind? Do I say sight impaired? Blind. I'm a okay, blind, blind mother. Good. All right, blind. <laughs> the, um, can't see. The man can't see. Right. The um, uh, for a blind person, they are familiar with touch and shapes. Right. So they can tell the difference between a cube and a sphere, mm-hmm. for example. So what I try to tell them is, uh, you know, first I'd say, okay, mainstream science is, is shows you that it's a sphere. Give them whatever it is, basketball, mm-hmm. right? And a basketball, you'd say that you, you could you explain to them in one sense, like, look, if you have your, put your one finger here on the basketball and then put your other finger, say, eight inches away on the other side of the basketball, mm-hmm. you cannot feel, you know, that that point cannot and I know I'm saying visual here, mm-hmm. that point is in no way can, because it's not, because it's on a curved surface, can, is it within range of the other point to where it can be seen at all? And I know, again, I'm using visual here, but I, this will work, trust me. Because again, it, once you can feel it, you get that. Well, I was just going to say, actually, that makes a lot of sense because let's just say you take a bigger ball, okay? Yeah. And um, let's say every four inches on this bigger ball, you put something upright that, it can be anything, a, a few blocks of, sorry, of Legos or whatever, right? And just yeah. glue them to the ball. Put your hand flat on the ball. That's your visual eyesight. Spin yep. the ball as you go along, and you should be able to, you know, hit the blocks, and that should exactly. be the curvature. Yeah. With, a, with a straight line, 
you you can you can only go so far on a curved surface on a sphere mm -hmm. before your hand runs into something. If you use a hand or a piece of paper or whatever it is, the the a flat surface on a or a flat a flat surface, of course, representing the visual spectrum or line of sight or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. One point cannot see the other point. Obviously, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, the the argument which which uh, globalists will like to throw in every once in a while is how come we can't see Hong Kong from San Francisco with a really big telescope? I go, well, that's an interesting question because technically, if you could get rid of all the atmosphere, because the atmosphere is the real problem, if you get yeah. rid of all the weather and make it a complete vacuum, you might have a shot yep. at seeing the, the other side of that. You know, because at, at that point, you've got no atmospheric effects, no nitrogen, oxygen mixture, because remember, we're breathing in really kind of a thin version of water right you know we're not we're not breathing in just oxygen and you then you might be able to and that that actually i think would work for a blind person hmm. meaning you know again if you, because they can feel the curved surface it wouldn't make sense in their head yeah it, it, again i don't know what a blind person if they, when they visualize things they should be able to, to take into account it's like look you can't it, what we're saying is is that there's objects that can be seen much much further than what the curved ball would allow then right. of course you show them a flat disc whatever it is a, a dinner plate mm -hmm. and say on this model it works on yeah. the sphere it doesn't work and <laughs> so far again you know the challenge i put to science which i said earlier which was show me an object prove me wrong show me an object at 150 miles or less that you cannot see no matter what right show me a lighthouse show me a building that you take 20 people down to the beach take them there every day for a month no matter what happens they can't say well can't see it. it's on the other side of the curvature yeah like, no 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 it's it's you can always be pulled back again that's the big difference between 10 years ago 10 years ago and now i'm not saying the the cool picks 900 really changed things but that type of camera really changed things yeah because now the average person for i don't know how much that thing cost uh now the average person can go to any beach. Luckily for us, most of the population lives on the water. <laughs> at the, uh, go to any beach and look at an object that you should not see far away. Again, it's something we just took for granted. Yep. We all know the boats over the horizon thing. But so anyway, the, sorry, going off track. For a blind person, that's the test I would use. I would show them. A, I would get, get them, get them in the concept of a big sphere and how from one point to the other, you can't feel your way straight across. One point cannot cannot see it. Like you, where you, however you want to do it, hold a string, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you cannot you cannot get there from here. Not, yeah, that's not what even. I was kind of saying. Like if if the person could visualize their their hand, like the bottom of their palm is where they are standing. The tip of their finger is the end of their visual eyesight. Right. And just move your hand across the ball, and that that point you should be able to not see something or see something for example right or or do you just go that far to just if they know what uh, they know understand the concept of firearms yeah that would also work it's like look a bullet only goes so far if 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 the bullet could if you had infinite velocity eventually you would run into the curvature of the earth yeah. eventually but it doesn't and in fact which is why the um uh, my ex-co-host jonathan he mentioned when that thing came out that the navy's rail gun how mm -hmm. uh, they were saying that they were targeting things over 100 miles away but the rail gun has no guidance systems right it's a straight shot so how are you hitting something that should be <laughs> two thousand three thousand feet on the other side of the hill with well, a straight shot yeah and i also heard about um some naval officer was talking about how they would paint uh, mm -hmm. with laser uh, a target oh, yeah yeah, so. yeah that was one of the guys i interviewed sean mccrary he yeah. was one of, the, one of the first guy that opened the floodgates to the subject matter yep. expert series which was he said they're painting with a beam radar mm -hmm. they're painting targets that are 50 nautical miles away which i shouldn't say nautical miles i, I don't know why they're different why uh, not 50 nautical miles is like 60 land miles right everything in the water is different you know the like speeds it's not miles per hour it's not yeah whatever but anyway the point is is that that he's painting targets at 60 miles away and 60 miles away is 2,000 plus feet on the other side of the curve yep so how are you doing that you, you're not again you're not bouncing this radar up and then banking it down like a like a trick shot on a pool table <laughs> you are hitting it straight you know point to point and he goes he goes look if we couldn't do this 100 percent accurately we wouldn't use this system right so how are we doing it plus he said we were you they were using infrared binoculars at distances at night 
He goes, look, infrared doesn't lie. You mm -hmm. could say it's a mirage all you want, but mirages don't give off heat signatures. Yeah. So <laughs> another it, thing, it was great. I love I love that guy. Yeah, that was a really good one. Um, yeah. Another th experiment that I thought of is um, maybe this doesn't make sense. Maybe this is uh, my visual mind battling with my blind mind, but mm -hmm. uh, plumb bobs. So yep. when you build a building, you know, they, they go straight up. However, for the very, very tall buildings, 100 feet or more, let's say, I mean 50 feet or more, I think, there should be a visual uh, cue that the building, if it's going with the plumb bob, should flare out of the top. Yeah? Well, the bigger one would be, the, the bigger example, the better example, I should say, is the width. Because I did several subject matter experts that specialized in surveying. Mm -hmm. In fact, I... It's weird the amount of knowledge that the flat earth community has absorbed we we learn more science now doing the flat earth stuff than we yeah. ever did yeah in, in i school. agree with that. I, yeah. I mean it's amazing now look everybody in the flat earth community eight inches per mile squared everybody knows that now yeah and even though three years ago we'd be like well, the eight inches per mile square i'd be like huh? who, knows that? <laughs> who knows that nobody knows now everybody knows it's beaten into our heads but more the more people um, probably know that than uh, maybe not, but it's getting there. More people would be up there with the E equals MC squared thing. Oh yeah, well yeah, it's get it's definitely getting up there. Where there was a uh, there's two like I knew more about surveying than I ever wanted to know. That there's two types of surveyors that are out there. Ninety five percent of the world does things what's known as planar surveyors, mm -hmm. like they treat literally every project like it's absolutely flat. And then the the one percent is geodetic surveyors, yeah. which treat the world like it's like it's a globe. And you're going why the big disparage in numbers, right? Yeah. And it's because the geodetic surveyors only work on massive projects that are 250 miles or bigger. Mm -hmm. So their math can be fudged any way they want. It's going to work. Whereas the planar oh, surveyors, yeah. they're designing stuff that are ve that that's very, very precise. And the guy that I was talking to, which gets to your point, he was working on width, big, big projects, things mm -hmm. that were 20 miles wide, like car factories yeah. and airports and stuff like that. Big projects, not, not just a house. He goes, but you're still working on a giant, flat, perfectly, perfectly flat square. And he goes, what's interesting is this kind of goes with your plumb bob thing, mm -hmm. which is. He goes, forget about just the project I'm working on. Let's say I'm working on a 10 mile by 10 mile square project, right? Mm -hmm. He goes, what about the projects to the north, south, east, and west of me? Not to mention the diagonals, right? All these things have to line up with me like crackers, laying crackers out on a table. If somebody didn't account for the curvature of the earth, even one of those projects, you're going to, when they butt up next to each other, they're going to be off. They're going to be yeah. way off. And he goes... He goes, not only did that never happen in my 30 years of surveying, he goes, no one even talked about it. It was never even mentioned as like a joke because that's huh. something they tell the rookies because every once in a while, you know, when you're fresh out of college, they say, oh, yeah, well, well aren't you going to take into account the curvature of the earth? Everyone says the same thing. They go, you know what? Don't worry about it. And they weren't <laughs> saying that like they literally mean don't worry about it. that's the yeah. whole definition of planar surveying is you treat every project like it's perfectly flat. Which is fine, except that you can't, if it's a globe, you can't treat it ever like perfectly flat. It's like covering, uh, my analogy apparently resonated pretty well. It's like covering a basketball with wheat thins. Sooner or later, <laughs> you're going to run into gaps. Yeah. And they're going to be big gaps. <laughs> yeah. So how is that possible? Anyway. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, you wanted to tell the audience about the what happened, what you found on the ISSS footage today? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, the well no, I didn't find it. That was uh, D I T R H, but uh, and even he got it from a listener. Most of the people in the community now, it's it starts out with some little rumor, some little tidbit. It's like, hey, I found this link on such and such. Can you check it out? And he'll shoot it off to five or six people, and we kind of vet it. But in this case, it was sent to D I T R H, and we've seen a lot of I S S footage, and most of the interior footage is horrible to say the least. And and I thought they were getting better after a while. At least they were getting people's hair shorter, and they were doing. <laughs> things a little smoother <laughs> but he found this short piece of footage where i think it was a live feed at one point where these two the two male astronauts were talking to like a classroom uh -huh. and in the background again 
the the background stuff was weird enough because they have to do the obligatory guy floating in the background you know from one end <laughs> one side to the other that's straight movie production house right yeah, yeah it's like yeah. i was like just have him floating in the background and then coming back the other direction it's a great <laughs> distraction piece and he was wearing a harness but but and, he, and he, you tried to zoom in as best you could and that was pretty good but mm -hmm. what was damning was during the very same interview was one of the guys in the in the green shirt uh, was the, the guy in the blue shirt, he had the microphone and he was talking about blah, blah, blah. And he was adjusting his baseball cap and twirling around his baseball cap a little bit. And then it looks like he makes a hand gesture. And for whatever reason, the guy in the green grabs nothing. It's like he's great. He's, he's, he's a cue. He's going to grab whatever object the blue guy was going to have. He brought it to his chest and then put it over off to the side. Right. Mm -hmm. But he didn't grab anything. Yeah. So he literally was grabbing nothing. So, but he went through the entire motion, and you know I, I, what happens in real life is like, look, if you grab something, if you don't grab something from somebody, that's it. The motion stops. Yeah. There's yeah. no follow through. You don't. It's yeah. it's you know the if the pitcher if the pitcher on the mound in baseball throws the ball into the dirt, the batter literally just straight down. The batter doesn't swing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And in this case, the guy completely is like, oh, yeah, and it didn't in slow motion. It wasn't like a quick jerky movement. There was no hesitation. There was no backtrack. Yeah. He wasn't fumbling around. It was like he was grabbing for the microphone, but the guy never gave him the microphone. So the CGI people didn't know what to do. So the CGI routine didn't run. But the guy, but since it was a human being in the frame, he just made his move anyway. And since it was live, they couldn't do anything. So they just let it go. And it's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? So yeah. Yeah, we're going to be analyzing that sucker, I'm sure, for the next week. And it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. It's just yeah. one more example of the why the ISS, the, the production value in the ISS has been horrible since the beginning. They've played it off. You know, again, I don't know what low rent production they've been trying to pull for, for the number of years. But now, only now is it are every, is everybody re-examining all the footage, and it's fantastic. Love love that they caught that this morning. Yeah. It's great too to have this type of connection via the internet. Everybody can oh, you, yeah. you can reach anybody at any moment. Cross reference. Hey, get a second opinion, third, fourth, and fifth opinion, and not just have to worry about what's printed in the it's, paper. It is why it is why, in my opinion, why the SpaceX program next year will be kicked down the road. They will kick that can down the road. Mm -hmm. There is no way you can launch tourists around the moon and back next year. You cannot fake that. Yeah. Because yeah. if you try, you are gonna botch it up badly. It is it, I have said this on several things. It's like, look, and I wasn't kidding. And I'm a pretty creative guy. I can produce some stuff. And when if somebody offered me a dump truck full of money and all the Hollywood people I could I could ever want and say, look, you need to fake the Mars program in X number of years, mm -hmm. I'd say you're out of your freaking head. There's mm -hmm. no there is no amount of money that can that can be used to fake this. It's not about the money. As a matter of fact, it is about the production mistakes, which happen in every. In fact, the bigger the production is, the more guarantee you're going to have to make mistakes. Yeah. You guys think I'm kidding out there? Go. How many websites are there? MovieMistakes.com, MovieBloopers.com. Type in uh, into YouTube. How many? I mean, Lord of the Rings had a freaking car driving in a high on a road in the first version of it before they went to Blu-ray. Oh, Things wow. slip by production, and the reason why the you make mistakes in hundred million dollar movie, two hundred million dollar movies. The reason why there's mistakes is because of the money involved, meaning. Because they have to shoot things efficiently, they shoot stuff out of sequence. So if you're yeah. doing six scenes in the desert, but in the movie it takes place in like multiple days, you shoot them all in the same day, or sit, you know, and you you basically don't leave that section until you're done shooting all the desert scenes. Right. Yeah. Then you do all the mountain scenes. Then you do all the other stuff. When when you do that, you leave yourself open to massive mistakes because eventually somebody says, "Oh crap." We, we forgot this desert scene. Then you got to go back to the desert, but the set's already been torn down. So you got to rebuild it. And when you're rebuilding the set, something's out of place. Yeah. And all it takes is one nerd in the middle of Kansas at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> to look. It's like, hey, that coffee cup moved from one side of the room to the other. And, and the actor didn't move it there. Look here. Look, this scene right there. Hey, wait, what's that cat doing over there? That cat wasn't there. 
that's all it takes yeah. Yeah. and then that's it you you put it out there and boom movie bloopers and people pride themselves on it i mean there's people dedicated there's entire websites now they they they're absolutely that's their goal they go through blu-rays frame by frame wow. and look at it and for the longest time we didn't look at things like the news yeah. because the news is real time right the news the news doesn't make bloopers like that because it's all shot as is there's no such thing as a mistake hmm. now we know that's not true now hmm. we know that just about anything that that that's potentially out there short of a car crash is probably manufactured to a certain degree and yeah. i won't give too many examples of all the different conspiracies that are out there but there's a lot yeah mm -hmm. and now we're tearing it apart and the the iss which we never again nobody nobody doubted nasa for the longest time now we are dissecting every piece of footage look at that that 1983 footage that came out of, uh last week uh -huh. done by a geoshifter where they were they were showing some of the 1983 shuttle footage and the, the remember this was back before green screen they only had barely blue screen mm. i mean really limited special effects and there's a guy in the freaking background and it turns out the shuttle model the the shuttle image they were using when they were showing the payload bay was just a um uh just a uh, a physical model like star trek and star wars it was tiny and there was a guy oh. in the background and nobody nobody caught it they should have never released that footage and you know and even those grainy vhs quality it was still easy to see. And people, oh no, it's his reflection. It was like it was reflection. The guy was actually the camera was, was shooting from the window. It's like if it's reflection, why wouldn't the camera be right up to the window? Why would you see anybody behind that? It's like yeah. the place isn't that big. You're not going to put the camera six feet back from the window and shoot it from there. Yeah. And plus, you're going to do it with all the lights out. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, I like the footage that Jaron found about. Uh, it looks like scuba divers are in the background. There's some yellow stuff. Uh, oh yeah, it's like yeah. The the ISS again. You know what? You who should blame for all the scuba diving stuff? Blame uh, James Cameron, the direct, <laughs> the, the director of. Seriously, he should he should take a bow on this. Blame him, the guy that that did Avatar and yeah, uh, Terminator Titanic. Two. But the movie that that because he was he's really good on groundbreaking. If he can't get yeah. something to look right, he will invent something to make it look right. You know, he invented he invented basically all the cameras for Avatar. Mm -hmm. It re re. The entire 3D industry is the way it is just because of James Cameron. Yeah. And he did a movie, one of his first movies back before he, he could then just do anything he wants. It was called The Abyss, if you guys oh, remember yes. that. Yep. And it was, yep. it was brilliant. And, and it sh was shot underwater, but they had to figure out how to show deep water, which meant it had to be pitch black. Mm -hmm. And he came up with the idea. It's like, okay, we'll shoot in a shallow swimming pool, you know, a swimming pool, but we'll fill the top of the pool with layers and layers of black rubber balls which will completely block out light mm -hmm. and it was because they were shooting in outdoor pools mm -hmm. and that's how they did it now of course nasa they don't have to do that all they have to do is literally turn out the lights because they've yeah. got a pool that's inside a building so all they have to do is kill the lights and and there's no windows in the place and there's exactly. no light left in but that's how they did it you know and, and it's like oh that that because when you're watching it you're going oh, wow it didn't have to be necessarily underwater in fact when it was interesting because when the uh, the last the last sequence in the abyss when he was going down and down and down into the trench he was wearing essentially a space suit mm -hmm. and i'm wondering that's you know right. while they're again the, the people inspire others and why wouldn't they steal his techniques so it was great and it worked Dare you got a comment no, that's good. I'm good. Okay. Um, what else you got? Uh, I had a little opinion or theory. Um, on the footage of the ISS, when it shows Earth, the outside footage, um, everybody notices how fake it is, right? Yep. And, um, on uh, Facebook, you'll see these uh, live feeds, quote unquote. And, um, you know, a lot of flat earthers get on it and point out how fake it is because the graphics are so bad. Graphics and, are terrible. Yeah. And it's just obviously fake. And... What I've seen on Facebook as well as like ABC or CBS, they uh, they were showing footage of Aurora Borealis and it looked fake. You know, the plane was fake. And some people were catching that, like in mainstream people that, you know, don't believe in flat earth. Oh, they yeah. were catching that. So um, oh, yeah. uh, my opinion is that they were, um, you know, the elite or whatever were um, looking at these comments and seeing how people could spot out fakery, how easily. And I think they're keeping tabs on the people that you know are voicing their opinion that they can see 
the bigness in this and uh well, keeping tabs. Prob probably the yeah. um there's as far as keeping tabs there's only so many tabs you can keep because look it's out there and people just aren't buying it but yeah are they reacting to us this is the only conspiracy saying no where the powers that be have been reacting pretty much in real time mm -hmm. where you know this thing started gaining some steam in 2015 and this sure enough what happened in summer of 2015 the second blue marble shot was released then the shot of the earth or the moon transiting in, in front of the satellite in between the satellite and, and the earth oh, yeah. and then the earth rotating on its axis mm -hmm. and then the himawara satellite all were released in summer of 2015 mm -hmm. that that was no accident but they still can't backtrack from things their previous work like yeah. For example, the the one that I like to throw out to people now is forget about the blue marble shot. Look up the black marble shot. Those were horrible because the black marble shot was the earth at night. So from the dark side of the earth, they were showing the cities that were lit up. Yeah. But oh, when you went God. down to Australia, you go you look at the western half of Australia and it's lit up like wow, there's a lot of, look at all the populations and centers in Australia. But if you know anything about Australia, everybody lives on the coast. Yeah. The place is just a it's still a desert yeah. continent. Yeah. And there's no, nobody lives there. In fact, the one of the brightest lit parts that they had down in the western thing was was a national park. <laughs> and there's literally nobody there. And so they said, well, there were a lot of brush fires that summer. There were a lot of a lot of things wow. burning going really because the brush fires covered thousands of square miles. And they happen to look just like cities do at night. Mm -hmm. they, they generate that much light. Really? Seriously? Even it was, on an airplane, you you don't see that much light on the ground. Like big city, no. yeah, but um, still, no. it's bright, even from an airplane. No, even if you did the the weird exposure that they claim they do, it was it was awful. But but yeah, what you're talking about, the, how they do respond in real time, they absolutely have been doing it. They they can monitor social media. They can well, they, they have access to everything, so they can see if anything's tracking well or not. Again, which is why they've got to know by now. And I still don't even know why SpaceX would make that announcement. Maybe SpaceX went rogue and, and Elon mm -hmm. Musk was allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. But to try to fake a moon mission next year, I mean, this time next year, where, you know, with an untested booster, an untested capsule, pilots we don't know, uh, 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 the, the tourists we don't know. We don't know anything about anything, and yet they're going to try to pull this off. I'm going, how... 4k cameras are so cheap nowadays yeah you get them free with a box of cereal so why don't what that that there should be 4k cameras all over this thing how are you going to fake it how are you going to fake the footage how are you going to do it you're, you're going to break every rule that nasa has held to over the last 50 60 years which is you don't show any footage mm -hmm. of anything on a on a big scale you don't show anything leaving the Earth. You don't show anything coming back to Earth. You don't show the Sea of Tranquility. You don't show where the moon buggies are. You don't show any of this crap. Uh, even though, uh, here's a little tidbit, which I, I love to throw. The, the Chinese, if you believe the Chinese, the, they've had a rover on the moon since 2013. Hmm. Running around there right now, right this second. You go to a Chinese website, you'll see a live feed. So why aren't they in the Sea of Tranquility? Why aren't they there? It's because... There's nothing, that, well, one, there's nothing there. But if they were in the Sea of Tranquility, if you're driving around the moon bases again, all it takes one nerd to say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, that, the, the, that capsule shouldn't be so close to the American <laughs> flag. And, you know, because the Chinese have to be absolutely synced up with us. Yeah. And the footage is horrible. Japan sent HD uh, probes supposedly around the moon back in 2007, 2008. And the perfect chance to show the moon, you know, to, to keep the cameras running, HD mm -hmm. cameras, for, you know, from from the earth to the moon to the moon back. No, none of that footage. They apparently didn't even turn on the cameras until it was all, already in orbit in the moon. And then they turned them off on the way back. Come on. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I like how they make announcements like we're going to do this and then nothing ever happens and they don't even explain why they didn't do it. No, they don't. I, I kind of the, the analogy I try to give there is the uh, the hydrogen fuel cell cars. Mm -hmm. Which oh, is, yeah. you guys, anyone remembers this? Look, yeah. George Bush announced the you know, the future is going to be hydrogen fuel cell cars. Yep. They set up a bunch of stations in California. That was going to be the thing. Or uh, Schwarzenegger endorsed it. You know, yep. mm -hmm. hydrogen fuel cell car. I can't. Remember, I can do his accent. But he. <laughs> but the point was, is that they didn't. What they didn't tell people, and the reason why it was supposed to be hydrogen fuel cell cars, is because, um, 
because the the only thing the petroleum company can, they don't the, the the oil companies don't control electricity right. but mm -hmm. they do control the production of hydrogen mm -hmm. and so that was what they were going to do they were going to transition over there but what they couldn't figure out and they, they're still it's done it's dead they couldn't figure out how to make it, the engines work in cold weather that's mm -hmm. it so it could only be used in warm weather climate so good luck with that huh. selling a car interesting <laughs> I did not and know that. so and so they killed it. So hydrogen fuel cell cars are no longer. But the point was they just stopped talking about it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now it's not. They they took apart the station, sold the real estate off, and now now it's gone. That how which is why again SpaceX making the claim. You if you want to talk about going to Mars in 2030, who cares? Nobody's going to remember in 2020 that you made the announcement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But if you're saying you're going to the moon next year, I mean even Kennedy didn't say that yeah even kennedy was like oh yeah but at the end of the end of this decade <laughs> why he pronounced it like that i have no idea it's decade man it's not decade <laughs> but he he said that we're going to the moon and you know they even then they cut it close it was you know middle of 1969 yeah if, if, before they faked it but anyway sorry no where, problem where do you what think else you got? this whole flatter thing got started in recent times i mean it's only been a few years that it's hit like the web firestorm just like boom you can't go anywhere mm -hmm. without seeing flat earth in association with some other conspiracy video i'm sorry what was the question um he didn't have think... a question oh it was just a statement yeah oh yeah 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 i mean it's it's been massive and it really the there was only a couple people talking about it when i got into it yeah back in the day um i had i had seen matt's thing and Matt, give Matt some credit. I mean, the guy had been talking about it for years. Nobody was really listening. Mm -hmm. He used to be that NASA artist, right? That was the NASA artist yeah. where, again, I love the story. You know, whether it's true or not, he's only told it once. And I do love the story where he was hired as a contract artist out of Montreal, Canada to because he was he, I, I, you got to give him some credibility for this where he's, he is an excellent organic painter. Mm -hmm. The guy can paint things that if you took pictures of them you wouldn't necessarily know again that was his thing photo or painting right he's he's that good and they hired him it's like because he you he could create organic planetary things for for simulations now mm -hmm. there was nothing sinister about it back in the day mm -hmm. but i love but he was the but he was telling talking pe people about that for years i mean enough to where he actually got a youtube channel called the nasa channel and he never gave it up and then um, Eric DeBay was doing his thing at the end of 2014. There was a couple other guys over in Europe doing their thing. And when I got into it, again, I didn't invent flat earth, not, not by a, a long shot. But what I, all I did was I looked at it and I said, because one of my specialties, how I was trained was I was trained to take complex things and break it down into easy to digest pieces. That's, mm -hmm. that's one of the things I was trained to do with software. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked at this, I was going, this flat earth thing's really interesting, but it's still coming in like a, like a slightly fuzzy radio station. And, you know, people don't listen to fuzzy radio stations. It drives them insane. So all I did was literally walk up and turn the dial, you know, an eighth. Mm -hmm. And it came in clearer. And then people were like going, what is this music? What? <laughs> this station? This is incredible. It's like, dude, the station's always been there. Yeah. Exactly. You just haven't heard it. And I didn't think it was going to, honestly, I didn't think it was going to resonate as well with people but it did because he, because here's the here's the big reason why it resonated in my opinion and it again, had nothing to do with me it was because when people tried to kill the message when they tried to kill the idea they tried to lean eventually they're going to lean on nasa and that guy mm -hmm. from britain the uh that that uh heart park what do they call it park course skater his mm -hmm. line he was interviewed on a fairly mainstream show over there and he goes, the problem was if you lean on the space programs, you're going to, he goes, what you find over there, he goes, is really thin. Mm -hmm. goes, There's not much there. He goes, and, and he was reinforcing a point, which I said, there, there should be mountains and mountains. It should be an entire warehouse full of boxes full of stuff. And when you walk into that warehouse to shut down flat earth, you realize all the cardboard boxes are empty. Yep. There's a few brochures laying around. There's some packing <laughs> material here and there, but for the most part, it's just empty boxes. Mm -hmm. And then you get really disheartened because it's like a whoa, whoa, whoa. This thing, it's. I, I try to use also the other analogy I've been playing with is the boxer analogy. Mm -hmm. Science is a 500 year old behemoth, and mm -hmm. should be able to knock flat Earth 
in the first round, first minute of the first round. And every minute that Flowers stays in that ring, the guy, the, the behemoth on the other side looks worse and worse. It's mm-hmm. like, because everyone that stands is like, wait, why isn't he knocked this? Why is this? Why is Flowers still in the ring? And, you know, we're in round two, we're in round three. This guy's still in there. What, you know, what the heck happened? And it, he starts to look weaker and weaker and weaker as he goes along. And uh, again, that's where we are now to where well, the conference is coming up in the fall. There shouldn't be a conference. There's, no, there's never been in the, a conference and a flat earth conference in the history of the United States. Mm-hmm. You know, 500 years. I, the, Europe, I think, tried to do one up in the Netherlands recently. But yeah, 500 years. There, there's been almost nothing. And now we've got a full blown international conference coming up. Mm-hmm. So I remember uh, distinctly back in third grade, our teacher saying, oh, um, they went in space this year and they went out this far and then they then they saw this and showed our textbook with it, which had a picture of the blue marble, you know, yep. and and it was it was like they were presenting it as it was a fact. And nowadays you go to NASA's website and see that same picture is the artist, you know, conception of the earth. It wasn't the, that. the Apollo 17 photo is considered one of the most widely reproduced photos in the history of photos mm-hmm. ever. And which is amazing because, you know, people, again, still come as that one guy that came to me and, and said that, that you didn't need to see take the picture. In fact, even Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, said that, that you didn't need to take the picture to prove the Earth was a globe. It's like, oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you too. People, I don't care what you say with Matt. The problem was, in fact, I debated a guy just recently who had a master's in mathematics. Hmm. And he was, you know, again, it's the conditioning where, look the lowest common denominator out there the people the, the people that are the the average person on the street math means nothing to them you want to know why science is losing is because you removed science from so many aspects and uh, easy easily accessible science mm-hmm. to the to the man on the street that now even if you have an argument that argument is just they're just hearing static yeah and so flat earth it's like you know, people say, well, you got math and trig and calculus. I mean, seriously, the eight inches per mile squared, that gl- that glazes over people. Mm-hmm. People will just freak out when they hear that. It's like, oh, I don't remember my algebra. It's like, no, you're <laughs> damn right you don't. It's like, but all we have to do is like, look, here's a picture of the Earth from space, 1972. Oh, here's a picture of the Earth in 1990. There isn't one. It's a trick. Mm-hmm. It's a trick statement. Mm-hmm. And we throw out stuff that's so easy for them to understand and so, uh, so accessible mm-hmm. that science is just having a devil of a time because they just don't have the tools to fight it mm-hmm. and which is why I, mean, I don't think it's an accident neil degrasse tyson just re- released his introduction to astronomy brand new book you know mm-hmm. to kind of coincide with earth day and you know pro science like good luck introduction to astronomy that's too little too late not gonna happen yeah. bill nye saves the world television show too late mm-hmm. is not gonna happen plus that thing's got a whole nother agenda anyway yeah, you should so, go to the international movie database and look up neil degrasse tyson and look at all of his accolades Oh yeah, the man. The man's never done a debate. Mm-hmm. He has been in more mainstream movies than every other scientist combined. Yep. Big movies. I mean, not small movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the fact that he was in Superman versus Batman just insulted me as a comic book store owner. Mm-hmm. It, it was just, it was just horrible. <laughs> you, you know, I, I keep seeing him in different productions. It drives me insane. He was literally the last shot in Zoolander two before yep. they ran rolled rolled the credits. Why? Why is he the last shot in Zoolander two? He. <laughs> is he is the face of science that's all he is he's an actor he will not do debates and he um yeah he did get his phd in astrophysics but he's really let's call him what he is he's a presenter he's a guy that they put on stage he has excellent stage presence no Mm -hmm. question and and i'm not being racist when i say this he is a cross between bill cosby and sinbad the comedian that's what he is He, he he could go up on stage and he could pitch anything hmm. he could pitch boots he could pitch television shows he could pi- he could pitch a no-hitter that's, mean, that's a total that. trip because i had no idea what skin color he was until you just said that what, no one black? has ever told me well he doesn't he doesn't sound though super white necessarily well to me he sounds like um honestly he sounds like uh that stoner from all those movies. Cheech and Chong? No, 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 hey. not that old. Not that old. Recent, <laughs> like, um, oh my god, Days and Confused or uh, Pineapple Express guy. 
Oh, oh right, right. Pineapple Express. Uh, DeFranco. Or no, the other guy. The other one, Seth. Seth Rogen. Se yes, Seth Rogen. Thank you. Seth Rogen. That's what he sounds oh, yeah, like to me. Sort of like Seth Rogen. You're absolutely right. Good, good ear. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's just, and, and he can't debate. He, you do no. not want him losing. That's just the thing. You cannot put him in a room with flat earthers because, again, the, the, the boxing analogy, because even if, this is why Joe Rogan was shut down eventually. Mm -hmm. If even, if he doesn't torch that flat earther, if he doesn't shut him down in 10 minutes, mm -hmm. he's lost. Yeah. It's exactly. not, it's not that, you know, forget about the flat earther winning or a draw. He's got to win. He's got to win fast. Mm -hmm. And if he does not win fast where the flat earther's like, oh, he's got me. It must be a globe and walks off the stage. If he, that doesn't happen, then science is lost and there's nothing they, they can't, they do not want to see that because again, what we're talking about on the internet, it will stick. Yeah. That thing will be passed around in two seconds. So, which is why no we are, it's almost impossible to get science to debate this mm -hmm. because if they've done their homework at all, they know that, yeah, I, you might be able to throw a couple points out there mm -hmm. that, you know, that might, but we've got way for every one you've got, we've got five. Yeah. Yeah. And they can't answer them. And I mean, seriously, what's a scientist? I mean, the, 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 um, the Stanton Friedman interview that I did where I was throwing them the, the trap question about the Van Allen radiation belts. <laughs> Because you guys specialize in radiation. And I go, okay, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly or not deadly? Yeah. And go, and, and go, and cause, cause Van Allen said they were deadly. Yeah. And then he said, if you go through them really fast, they aren't deadly. But yet the Orion trial by fire video says that they're super deadly to where we're not even going to send man capsules yeah. before we do the Mars mission. So which is it? And then you look at the specs on the Apollo missions and the, the specs, there's no shielding at all. So we know there's no shielding. So the Van Allen belts weren't deadly. So Van Allen was wrong. You know, yeah. science can't answer that sort of questioning. Mm -hmm. They're they're stuck. They're stuck either way. And uh, they're again, they're having a, a a tough time. They will not approach us. I mean, I can't, I can't get anyone with a master's degree or higher mm -hmm. in science to go up against anybody in mm -hmm. in flat Earth right now. No, not just me, but anybody. It's <laughs> it's tough. That we're we're putting money up now. We're offering cash money to yeah. anyone to at least give us a a, a, a run, yeah. but they, they won't do it. And it's mostly because you don't want to be the guy, and I get it. Um, you know, I've got friends who are, who are academics who say that, look, they've spent too much time and too much money on their education. They've got the letters next to their name. You do not want to be that guy. No. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go down. You don't want to be the, I'll use the Michael Jordan reference. You don't want to be posterized. Yeah. You don't want to be the other guy in the picture while Michael Jordan's dunking on you. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's like, what they don't want to do so i like how uh, you're starting to talk about curvature more often because i noticed that wasn't one of your like main punches you know to, no yeah no, was, it wasn't but it's the turns out again you know we're all learning it's mm -hmm. the easiest thing for people to test because mm -hmm. everyone has access to some sort of body of water Matt, fine you may not have a beach house mm -hmm. you can go down to a beach everybody can make it to a beach i don't care if it's a lake you know, 85, was it 85, 90 percent of the population lives next to a body of water. Yeah. No mm -hmm. accident there. And mm -hmm. when you get since there's a lots of nooks and crannies, you mm -hmm. can find something on on the other end of some body of water and take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the easiest way, because we uh, normally I'd use a salt flats, you know, use the uh, the, the salt flats out in, in Utah or use the um, uh, the, the Solar del Uni flats but but then sciences or kansas the entire state of kansas, yeah, kansas. <laughs> but everyone would say all scientists say well that's just a really flat that's like a flat board on a round surface like, <laughs> well, okay fine then we'll you have to use bodies of water because since they won't admit to that they'll just keep saying the same thing it's, it's like really because the entire state of flat kansas is flat yeah flat as a board yeah, yeah. i think actually they, they did a scientific study and they said that it's actually technically flatter than a pancake yeah <laughs> Yeah, and and the yeah, that was that wasn't us. That was a university study. Yeah, that was you know enough people looked at it and said Kansas is pretty flat. Somebody should measure it. Yeah, and they did, and it was perfectly flat. The Solar del Uni one though is even for me even flatter. Hmm. It is so flat that water doesn't even pool. It's so uniform. Oh it's, wow! It's it's absolutely so when it rains, it's absolutely uniform, flat across, and then it's got water on it. Not only is it a hundred miles square flat surface, but it's a hundred flat square surface with an inch of water sometimes. And it's Damn. and it's you can look off in the distance and the mirror effects go all the way to the horizon and it's beautiful. 
Oh, it's, I bet that uh, would look an really amazing cool. series. That, in fact, might, might go on my bucket list as a place I want to go see before I die. Nice. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the strongest uh, evidence for a round Earth? Right now, curvature. Curvature. The, uh, the eight inches per mile squared thing. Because, and I say it's the strongest because there's been... For a round tons. Earth. Or, oh, round? Oh, I'm sorry, round yeah. Earth? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, sorry. Uh, strongest evidence for round Earth... The only thing they've got, seriously, the only thing they've got, which, and I, I, you know, I'll admit weaknesses, is the Antarctic sun. That's it. Yeah. It, because the Antarctic sun, 24 hours, should not be there. Right. And we, unfortunately, it's very, very difficult to prove because nobody lives there. There's, there's you know, 0.00001% of the population lives there. Then the people that live there are government. You yeah. know, it's, it's all yeah. military or, or military science. And so we have to take their time lapse photography as gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Jaron has shown in several different things, there's gaps, huge gaps yeah, in the time lapse photography. Mm -hmm. So, and, and uh, DITRH has also done that where they've looked at the photography and said, it's, there's huge gaps. You know, you see the shadows, you know, mm -hmm. they spin, they spin, they spin, and then kerchunk, you know, yeah. and then it, they blast around. So it's like, okay, so who's editing the, that footage? And their excuse is that it's it's too dark to see, you know. Yeah, too dark to see, or they don't have the bandwidth, or you know, they made up all sorts of crap. Yeah. So that's that's probably the weakest of the arguments. Everything else, everything else, we've got a great counter for, which mm -hmm. is which is fantastic for us. I mean, we've got more counters than they do have offensive weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only thing they got. Um, the the rest of the stuff they have, the 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 proof that it's a globe is usually just. The myths that have been perpetrated over the last several hundred years boats yeah. going over the horizon you go in a plane far enough you'll end up back in the same spot mm -hmm. uh nasa that means let's face it, let's call it what it is the, the the most the the biggest proof they have right now is nasa's foot limited footage mm -hmm. that's all they got i mean seriously they'll they'll show which is why they had to release the stuff that they did in 2015 because you couldn't you couldn't keep going eventually i will say this they they are some they got some very very smart people there at the top where they couldn't use that 1972 picture now mm -hmm. they had to release the the footage as quickly as they can i'm still trying to figure out though why they're having such a hard time even with supercomputers creating a model where they show the earth spinning and the weather morphing at the same time yeah like look this can't be that hard to do unless they figure it's it's just way too hard to get all the stars if, okay, fine. If you want to leave the stars out, try to get the weather to where the weather matches because you have to date time date stamp it. Oh, yeah. And eventually it's like, well, there was no hurricane over, you know, this part of the ocean during this day, you know, because there's people everywhere. You'd have to get the weather perfect. And I don't think they, um, they've they got the people to make that happen for mm. whatever reason. Either that or they want to get caught. Part of me still thinks they want to get caught because they could, again, they could have repressed this thing uh, to where YouTube didn't recommend it to people. To where the search engines don't show it up. Oh yeah. The again, type in into any search engine. Type the Earth is. Yeah. What do you think shows up at the top of the list? We didn't deliberately do that. Yep. That's just now the the side effect. Or type in something as as innocuous as is the, is the shouldn't type shouldn't fill in with is the Earth flat, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> and the, we didn't do that. How many people have told me that? Oh yeah, I was watching a video on, um on jfk i had it running in the background and now because of the auto play feature in youtube all of a sudden they're doing dishes the next thing you know they're watching listening to flat earth mm, that shouldn't wow. jfk shouldn't be linking to flat earth because most of the time we don't even put the word conspiracy in the title right so but that's yeah there's way too many people that are being exposed to this that uh again if you were the powers that be you could have you could have stunted this thing into the ground if you wanted to. It's it's almost like they want to get caught or they're leading into something else. And, Do you think that's uh, why they brought in Neil to uh, – because like before <laughs> Flat Earth, I never heard of the guy. I never seen any papers by him. He wasn't obviously in mainstream media. He wasn't doing interviews. He, he was out there, but you're right. He wasn't as big as he is now. In fact, we I think we actually gave him part of his movie career in 2016. Yeah. Because he wasn't he was the face of science, but now he really is the face of science. Mm -hmm. Now he the between the uh the, the Trinity, which is Neil, Bill Nye, and Michio Kaku, 
yeah. from yeah. from Japan. Yeah. They're on a lot of stuff. There's only three guys out there. Well, then Brian Cox. Mm -hmm. Brian Cox basically takes care of all of Europe. And then Neil, he does family stuff. I'm sorry, Neil does, does science institutions. Bill, Bill Nye, Nye does the family stuff. Yeah. And Michio Kaku, who basically lives on CNN yep. and Fox and every once in a while goes off to other things. But yeah, Neil is not a... Um, he's not... He's, he's a manufactured celebrity. But, yeah. but the big indicator, the big giveaway for him is he will not debate. He's never done a debate. Mm -hmm. Ever in, in the history of, of, of his career. He's never sat down. You will never see any footage of him arguing with somebody else. That's not his role. His role is to go stand on camera, say that science is good, religion is bad. Oh, and then my favorite line is uh, that science is right, whether you believe in it or not. Oh, wow. And that was one of the most wow. arrogant things I have ever heard. He said this more than once because he's saying that, that science is fact. And once it's a fact, it's a fact. And it's like, well, unless it's not a fact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you, you, it's not like science hasn't made mistakes in the past. Uh, he don't says himself, them. too, that we don't really know what gravity is, but we, we, yeah, know I saw we, can, we can only say what it does. Yeah. We can say what gravity, do. well, obviously, you know, you drop something, it falls. Yeah. <laughs> we can tell you what gravity does, but we can't tell you what it is. That's, Which is why insane. when they come back and they say, well, what's, what's gravity on a flat earth? I go, what's gravity on a sphere? Yeah. You can't tell me what, the, what it is. Mm -hmm. I, uh, it's mass pointing towards the center. Go find gravity's mass pulling it straight down on yep. a flat disc. It works yep. the same way, yeah. you know. Don't uh, and then of course again, don't get me started on um, on science. You know, again, I'm not bashing science. I want to I want to be straight on this. I'm not saying that science is a bad thing. Look, I don't want to live in the 1850s again. Mm -hmm. I, I you know um, light bulbs, refrigeration, air conditioning. Um, Microwave ovens, super convenient, like all these things. But what I'm saying is, is that science will make massive leaps of faith, especially when money is involved. And they're not infallible. They're not this priesthood of people that, that can't be bought. Science is bought all the time. Mm -hmm. If you don't think that, think of the scientists. Well, think of products that went to market. There's a reason why class action lawsuits happen. So class action lawsuits happen because science makes mistakes. Yep. Big ones. Uh, lead paint. We didn't know that kids were going to start chewing on paint chips. I had no idea. Lead gasoline. You know what? Lead seems to be bad. Let's just not put lead in anything else because we use it in bullets, and there is something called lead poisoning. Mm -hmm. uh, DDT. Uh, people forget about DDT. They sprayed that. You know what DDT was initially for? Uh, it was, it was to wipe out mosquitoes. Yeah. It, it, was, it was to wipe out malaria in the United States. Let's spray it over 5 million homes. Mm hmm. hmm. You know what? Seems to be carcinogenic and it wipes out entire ecosystems. In fact, we almost killed. There's the reason why the bald eagle was an endangered species yeah. was because of DDT. We almost wiped out the national bird yeah. because of what we did. Or, or my favorite, let, let, me, let me end this rant on this one. My favorite <laughs> is the, the fact that science scientists came out and said that cigarettes were fine. Yeah. Cigarettes didn't, <laughs> didn't kill you. And Ooh. that went on for a long time. Television commercials, mm -hmm. Flintstones, advertising cigarettes. And the only reason that it was curbed was because the health industry, bigger money, got was getting their asses handed to them because they were paying for all these lung cancer treatments. Yeah. And they're saying, you know what? Let's do our own studies. Oh, look, cigarettes will kill you dead. So then they came back and but, you know, again, so much money that even after that. Yeah, fine. It's not there's no more television commercials, no more radio commercials. You don't market them to children anymore, roughly. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the cigarette companies are still here. Yeah, because there's there's just too much money. So, you know, as far as in fact, I, I should look this up after I'm done. If like other countries even have warning labels. Mm -hmm. What the uh, good what, point? Probably not. I'm probably good. not. Yeah. Because. I mean, why? Why? I mean, the Americans did it, but the um, what they what the cigarettes companies didn't know until later was, and I'm not knocking you guys if you smoke. I was, was that one out of five because smokers are smokers, plain and simple. The um, is that one in five people smoke, regardless. Huh. The, it's 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 still twenty percent in this country, and mm. and it's it, the one no matter what you do, no matter what advertising, one in five people is still going to smoke. It's a hardwired thing. Don't know why, but that's what it is. But the cigarettes company should have, could have saved a lot of money and heartache by just saying, you know what, we'll just yeah. do whatever, cave in and 
uh, the legal fees were pushing, I think, a billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, sorry, what were we talking about? Shoot, man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that was some good information, <laughs> though. <laughs> oh yeah, science. Yeah, the, again, science isn't <laughs> necessarily bad, but they make massive leaps of faith, and they should own up to it. This is one of those situations, though, where again, I'm empathetic. I get why they're trying to hold on to it mm -hmm. because they they put this out there for so long exactly. that science that all honestly if you're a scientist you do the same thing you can't you can't g let this thing go down without a fight because it's going to hurt science so badly mm -hmm. that people the the credibility people's faith in science there, there's yeah. so many things you'd have to re because you have to reopen a whole bunch of other things everything everything I heard, Everything science has ever said. I heard a talk somewhere along these lines where that uh, if that would to crush science and that would, you know, lead more people to the church. And so there's this there was this huge debate about the, the science versus religion type of thing. You know, as much as I'd like to say that it's 2017 and we become more evolved. Hmm. I, I did build this in the clues, which is a warning to religion, yeah. which is like, look, I know that your first instincts are going to be grab your pitchforks and your torches <laughs> and go to the local universities <laughs> and just start burning things. I know that's what should, what your first instinct is going to be because science has been ruthless yeah. against religion yeah. for a long time. And they have had, and, and this is, <laughs> this is was the line from uh, devil's advocate. It's like, you had a good run science yep. <laughs> had to end someday. That's pretty much what this is going to turn into as, as much as because and it'll start out slow. Uh, you know, there'll be religious leaders will say, well, you know, show restraint. But this three Get months em. later, those same leaders are going to be like, and we knew it all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those unwashed heathens yeah. in those universities. <laughs> it'll be ugly. They'll and start, and they'll, I, there's nothing you can do that that's going to happen. Yeah. Look, it's people, people fight for revenge mm -hmm. and there's I, there's been a lot of very hurt people over the years because science has berated any all forms of religious faith let's face it and so they do they have a right to be mad yes do they have a right to destroy science entirely and turn us back into an amish civilization probably not no. i don't think that's ever going to happen in fact the amish will go through this and they won't even know anything happened how does the uh, religious aspect or spiritual aspect play a part for you in Flat Earth? I was, and I would have, you've probably heard me say this on other things. I was, I had fallen away from spirituality, mm -hmm. fallen way away. I mean, I was, a, again, I was about as nerdy as they come. You know, I played video games for a living. I owned a comic book store. I hosted Magic the Gathering Party. <laughs> Air high five. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was. I, I still. I still have a Warcraft character, you know, which I will probably log into after this is done. Um, because I got dailies, I got to take care of. There's. I mean, I got all. I mean, I've watched every science fiction series you could ever imagine. You know, forget about just the Star Wars and Star Trek. Mm. Every episode of Stargate. You know, all the Battlestar nice. Galacticas, Battle all the, you can think of it. I, although I Star will Fighter. say I never watched Farscape, but that's a whole nother thing. That's, that's like, what was that Stephen, Stephen Wright joke? I like to play every, anything, the, everything the Beatles ever wrote. I'm not going to play all of Hey Jude. <laughs> that's sort of like the Farscape for me. Where anyway, so when it came to, so yes, yeah, super, super nerdy. So, so religion for me became more of like, eh, religion. Mm -hmm. But once I got into this, mm -hmm. I understood. I got a whole new perspective on religion yeah. and spirituality, which was the big thing was, is I've always felt it. We've yeah. all felt that yeah. somebody's been looking over our shoulder for a long time. Everyone's felt it. And look, look, you can be hypocritical all you want. When the chips are down, people pray to something. People have yep. never gone to church in their life. Mm -hmm. They're praying to something. You're in a car that's going underwater. and You can't get your windows down. Oh, you better believe you're, you're, you're saying a prayer. Yeah. Right. So when it came to this, I got it. I told, and, and what, you know, what did it for me was the astronauts thing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when, when mm -hmm. the Apollo astronaut, which is why they don't tell astronauts anymore, the, the Apollo astronauts, I think it was a kind of an, ex, not even an experiment. It's like, yeah, these guys can take it. They're heroes for God's sakes. 
Like, tell them, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, the Earth's flat. God's probably real. All right, do your job. <laughs> Which sounds great in theory, but then all of a sudden these guys start, it starts sinking in and yeah. people think the same yeah. thing, which is, okay, do you do something bad? And he keeps working back. It's like, okay, fine. I'm never going to shoot anybody again. Mm -hmm. Not that I've shot anybody, right? I'm never going to commit a hate crime. Yeah. I, but then you just keep working your way back. It's like, okay, what, you know, what would I do that was bad? What right. malicious act am I going to do? Not put your what hand on the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, not put your hand on the Bible. Because, again, and which is why I said, and some religious people gave me crap, and they said, well, you know, the Bible's not a piece of wood. I'm going, no, 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 you're missing the point. My point was, it's not that the Bible was in front of them. The Bible was just a reminder. Yeah. What you're doing was you're saying, hey, I'd like you to swear before God, oh, the God's represented in this Bible here, but it could have been anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it could have been a ham sandwich. Now mm -hmm. people are going to give me a crap. Say, the Bible's not a ham sandwich. It's like, <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. The point was, is that, they look at it and they say, and you say, you swear to, to you know, to God that, that you went to the moon. Well, now you get a problem because if it's one thing, again, this with all religions, which is why it's a delicate balance, all religions believe, you know, they can say 100%, of course. You know, if you have faith, you believe 100%, but it's like 99.99%, right. but you don't know. Yeah. Because you don't have, you don't have actual proof. If the astronauts are shown pictures, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's the edge of the world. No, it's not the handprint of God, but <laughs> close, close to what we got. Hey, by the way, do your jobs. The um, once that happens, you what do you do? Are you gonna yeah. lie? You gonna really lie if it makes a difference? Now, again, I, I joked about it in the clue. I said it's not that a bolt of lightning was gonna come down and smack these guys, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna roll those dice. No. You're not gonna do it. The the line, which is why I did the traffic cam thing. I say. Everyone's run a red light. Everyone's done it. You know, I've been high on mescaline and coke and booze, just running red lights all night. No, it's not true. But the uh, but you everyone's run a red light. But when you see the the sign beforehand that says uh, photo photo uh, oh, uh, intersection coming yeah. up, right? And you see the camera, that stupid pole that they have. Yeah. You know, you see the camera. Do you run that red light? No. Nope. I've, so I've watched people hit the brakes hard going into this interaction. <laughs> you know, where I watched a girl go out 20 feet, then reverse, reverse. it, go back. <laughs> and I'm going, look, you might as well, you know, because it only takes Just three go. pictures. I think you're still screwed. Yeah. The third, you know, the, 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 the picture of you, you know, freaking out because you're looking up at the at the camera. The um, Anyway, the point is, is that you don't run the red light. Why don't you run the red light? Well, because I'm going to get caught. Yeah. Why were you thinking that, about what it? What if? Yeah, what what you know, what if the the camera was there? What are you gonna do if the camera's on you? Yeah, and people don't do the same thing. It, it was part again part of the whole circle back around. Part of why I think the the world was built the way it was, and that was to act naturally. Mm -hmm. Now, eventually, though, once you find out, then you don't act naturally anymore. You know, it's the whole candid camera thing. Yeah, once you realize you're being punked by Ashton Kutcher, you don't keep doing the same thing you're doing. You don't. So anyway, so spirituality for me, yeah, a, a big reinforcement, which is why eventually when I got to the end of the clues, I had to I had to pull it in. I couldn't ignore it. Yeah. So, Dara, how much time do we got left? We're pretty much about at the hour mark for the radio portion. But if you feel like going longer, we can do that, Mark, or we can we pretty much got everything covered, I believe. Unless you have anything else. Uh, yeah, you got any parting questions? That's fine. I mean, I can go a little longer. Okay. But uh, I just got a comment that the average people will not believe in flat earth and that sucks that there were a condition like that. I mean, the, the, the average person, though, is, is yeah, they're, they're usually mouth breathing troglodytes. But at the same time, condition can be broken. No, no question. Okay. Don't worry yeah. about that. Ours it's, were. You got to remember. Well, there you go. Yeah. The, uh, not saying that you're, you know, one of yeah. those guys. <laughs> but but at the same time look at how it's resonated so far the the thing that there's so many aspects of flat earth that work for its benefit one of the biggest is what i call the la brea tar pits uh syndrome which is uh, kind of like the puzzle box thing where the, the guy's looking at the yeah. park bench in the children's puzzle box mm -hmm. la brea tar pits whether you're your friend or foe you see somebody in the in the tar pit struggling you're like oh i'm gonna you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the friend <laughs> part i'm gonna help him out you get pulled in <laughs> then the next guy comes along oh i'm gonna help him out and it's just this chain reaction yeah. it's the same thing we see time and time again with flat earth 
nobody agrees with flat earth right away everybody says the same thing it's stupid it's mm -hmm. the dumbest thing ever and you're stupid for looking at it and you know what i'm going to give it three minutes when i get home and think to myself how stupid it is and I, then i'm going to be dumb enough to type into something in the search engine and then you're going to watch a video for five minutes and then oh i don't know five days <laughs> later when yeah. you haven't gone to work and you're like oh, <laughs> oh smog <laughs> seriously i had that moment and so many other people you have that it, it's the it's that snap light bulb moment yeah. where all of a sudden you're watching the video and you're going and it, it dawns on you it's like yeah. oh how come i didn't get this before it's real it was the it, you know it's the ultimate street ma ma magician trick yeah. you know everybody fell for it everybody yeah. fell for it because why wouldn't you the uh, let me let me let me throw this in there the reason why i used the movie again, I love movie references. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's *The Village* mm -hmm. is that we can do that movie is timeless in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely, is timeless because it can work today. It can work 40 years ago. It can work 40 years from now. And that is, you take a group of kids, you create a village, and and and, and a boundary, and you tell them where they are. Why would they doubt you? They are not yeah. their their parents. And and what's interesting about the village, here's where it gets creepy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the Truman show. What's creepy is in the village is once those that first group of parents, the one that puts it put them in there, once they got older and died, mm -hmm. no one's gonna know. Then everyone in the village is gonna think they're in the freaking eighteen hundreds in Pennsylvania, not yeah. realizing it's two thousand ten. You know, in the United States or whenever it is, not realize it's modern day wow. because the, the line that was in the Truman Show, we accept the world that is presented to us. Yep. If you show a six year old a globe, what is he going to believe? He is never going to question it. Twelve mm -hmm. years later, he's graduating from high school. Oh, by the way, it's still a globe. Got it. Thumbs up. It's still a globe. I'm out of here. No one's ever, ever going to question it. And what when I when I did the clues, what I when I was doing the thought experiment of how it how it expands outward, the bigger model you make it, the bigger it gets, the easier it is to where you don't need any actors at all. It's not yeah. like the Truman show where everyone's in on it, except for Truman, which is a bunch of crap, by the way. You could have done 50 kids, but I know that doesn't make much of a movie. Mm -hmm. You could have once you get up to about a thousand miles, you can make it. Uh, you can make a, a huge amount of people believe in this. Mm -hmm. And if you make it so big that even modern technology, like air travel, like you can go for, try, fly from one place to the other, then literally you can convince the entire population. All you have to do is have the people at the very, very tippy top not tell, you know, not tell anybody. Yeah. Um, sort of like uh, I heard let me, I, one more parting shot and then you guys have some questions if you want which is um, uh, a little underrated movie, which a lot of people haven't seen, is uh, Bill Murray's City of Ember. City of Amber, huh. City of Ember. You have to look that up. Where they were in a bomb shelter. You didn't know until, spoiler alert, mm -hmm. uh, where they were in a city-sized bomb shelter underneath the ground after a world war, which you never even saw. Oh, wow. And they were down there. But what happened was the automated systems that were, to were supposed to tell them that, oh, yeah, by the way, you can leave now, uh -huh. never kicked in. And oh, so they shit. were down there for hundreds of years, you know, with an entire ecosystem and the whole nine years, never even knew the world was out there. Huh. And some kids that finally stumbled upon it only because the city was starting to fall apart because the city was never supposed to last that long. Mm -hmm. and the automated, but the automated systems had failed after whatever number of years it wasn't it wasn't even i think it was supposed to be 50 years or 100 years but the thing it broke the point is is that as long as as long as a couple generations pass mm -hmm. the people will believe anything yeah and so that's what we did i mean seriously 450 years is such a long time most people can't even trace their family history back 200 years let alone right. 500 years that that we believe everything that is that has been said to us by authority why would we question it and nasa is the perfect representation of that because they're non-threatening it's not like the u.s army if the u.s army was saying the u.s world was a globe we would have had a lot more problems by now yeah but since it's nasa again white uniforms no guns smile for the camera you know everything's scientific and we use all their pro you know all these scientific products it's perfect it yeah. worked uh but unfortunately the limited amount of tech that they released finally caught up with them uh, the internet, what we're doing right here, that was a big one. Yeah. High speed internet with social media attached to it was, the, there was a ticking time bomb. And I think they knew that. 
Mm-hmm. So I mean, the rest of it, seriously, we, where are flying cars? Where are the Jetsons cars? They, they, we should have had them by now. Yeah. We didn't. Automobiles have not changed in a hundred years since they were invented. Have not yep. changed, yep. and the guns haven't changed. We with all the stuff that we talked about in future movies, even fifty <clears> years ago. Uh, are, are, look, look at this. Look at the television show Space nineteen ninety nine. Which was about moon base. <laughs> not only not only we have a moon base, but the moon base had a catastrophe and <laughs> shot the moon out of orbit and started slinging itself out into the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You know where where was that future? It never never ever happened. We're in the same place now that we were in the nineties, technically. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Everything anyway. just looks cooler. Yeah. Any, uh, anything else you guys got? I'm no. good. Oh, well, not for me, Darren. Cool. No, that that should do it for this episode of the Mokita Report. So thank you everybody for tuning in. And Mark, I want to thank you. Mark Sargent. Yeah, thank you very much for. Joining hey, us. it was my pleasure, guys. Mm-hmm. It's always always good to talk flat Earth. I love doing it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Thank you, and uh, hold on, you two, for just a second while I close out. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Mokita Report. You can catch this in the Mokita Report playlist on YouTube dot com slash user slash third eye radio network have a great week everybody and see you next time this has been third eye radio network